Welcome back to Mini Magna. I'd like to thank everyone for replying to our email and our call for you to be the third Magna speaker. We asked you five questions and you delivered. We asked you to tell us about the challenges you face. These include what has been your biggest challenge in reef keeping? What is your current challenge in reef keeping? What do you see as a future challenge in reef keeping? Do you have any advice on how to overcome challenges in reef keeping? And finally, we asked you, what are your three top lessons learned since you've been in the marine aquarium hobby? Thank you very much to everyone who answered and here are your responses. I would say my biggest challenge in reef keeping has been attaining, I guess what I would call a 30,000 foot view understanding of what I'm doing. My biggest challenge in the past, currently, and in the future is one we can all relate to. And it's pretty basic. That's keeping our hands out of the water. We can't help ourselves. And most of the time, to be honest, we do more damage than good by moving something around in that tank. So stop it. Keep your hands out of there. Um, my biggest challenge in reef keeping has been my location. Um, I'm in northern Indiana. My closest LFS is an hour away. So everything that I have learned has been via Google. Like I went to Google University. Um, I, you know, the saltwater forums like Farm Boy Reef and Women in Reefing and like BRS, those are great. Um, but you're gonna get a million different answers whenever you ask, you know, something on one of those. And so I've really had to research myself and educate myself. And that's been difficult because, well, it's not really, because, you know, but I get jealous when I see people get together in like Chicago or like the women in reefing with the mini magna and things like that. I just wish that I had like an aquarium society near me. And so the lack of physical community has been really difficult. For, for me, it's more personal where I'm trying to connect and help all the uh, injured vets and uh, now uh, uh, aiding in a lot of uh, frontline workers and senior citizens uh, with their tanks. Uh, you know, some of them fish only, some are corals and then it's just, you know, getting the corals to them. And uh, a lot of quality has slipped since the uh, since it began, since I first started. Um, prices play a role too. Um, there's some things that I'm not able to afford to get, you know, namely they, they can't afford it. So I try to do my best and share, but uh, it's basically helping out other vets that are in my situation and frontline workers and uh, senior citizens. My biggest challenge in reef keeping has been keeping my enthusiasm up over time. I, I had a job at a public aquarium for 10 years and so every day I would go in and do aquarium work for eight hours a day and then I would come home and do aquarium work at home. That's a tough thing to do, to bring your job home all the time. So yeah, if uh, keeping your enthusiasm up is a thing that you need to pay attention to. Getting upset or getting bummed out about what you're doing or losing, losing oomph and vigor for the projects you have behind you. Um, you're going to end up uh, resenting it and that's no fun it's a fun hobby you should enjoy everything about it so if you find yourself getting uh, resentful or uh, losing your enthusiasm uh, think about what you really enjoy and what you would like to see in your aquariums and then make that happen my biggest challenge in uh, reef keeping has really been uh, the, the unknown uh, things that are beyond my control things that i can't test for um, and so I've had a couple different incidences in, in a couple systems, once in this one, once in a prior system, uh, where an event happened where I had a uh, fair amount of coral die off. And I still don't quite know exactly what had happened. Um, it was something that was uh, not something I could test for. Parameters looked fine. Uh, even on an ICP test, even nothing came back. It wasn't a heavy metal situation. Um, so I, I can speculate that it's, you know, something environmental or biological, but it's, uh, you know, something parasitic. Uh, but regardless, it's, you know, something that's happened that despite my best efforts, um, couldn't do anything against. Uh, you know, equipment, there, I can do a lot of things for redundancy, uh, lots of, you know, best setup practices to 
to help prevent you know all, all the failures I can possibly prevent, but despite those efforts, sometimes things just happen. Good morning. My name is Dr. Gregory Burrard, and I run a marine biology program in Des Moines, Iowa, of all places at Central Campus High School. And so when I think of reef keeping, it's from kind of personal experiences and also, you know, trying to train up hundred students every single year at maintaining all of our aquariums that we have in the lab. And so the biggest challenge I think is just finding time. Not necessarily finding time to do everything, but how to prioritize your time so that you're spending your time doing the right things. Because we can often be spending our time doing the wrong things and we keep scratching our head like, well, what's going on? What's going on? And if we kind of look back and even make a little checklist or a sheet of, you know, where should we spend our time? How are we spending our time? Uh, then we can kind of go back and make changes. So that's kind of the biggest challenge and um, the current challenge that, you know, I continually face with, with our students is, you know, how do we find the time to really do everything well? Hey, everybody. Thanks for letting me spend a few minutes talking to people at today's Mini Magna. My name is Judy St. Ledger, I'm the president of Rising Tide Conservation, and I'd like to talk to you about some of the challenges we faced in the marine aquarium hobby. Well, first and foremost, people say, what's the biggest challenge? I'll tell you what the biggest challenge used to be. It used to be people saying, hey, do we really need to aquaculture marine fish for this hobby? Well, the answer is yes. And I have to tell you, I'm really pleased that folks have come on board and said we do it with corals we can do it with fish and we are doing it with fish and that's what I think is important aquacultured fish are a reality and they're a growing part of the marine aquarium hobby thank you everybody thank you for helping to create them thank you for helping to raise them and thank you for buying them because it makes a difference and we've all seen the recent news challenges and developments politically that have made having those fish available something important. I would say my biggest challenge in reef keeping is sticking with, sticking with it when the challenges come. And they always do. For instance, in my I made a huge mistake in my refugium. Um, let macros get into the display tank. Now it's time to clean it up. And that's the part that's the biggest challenge to me, is sticking with it when the problems arise and instead of giving up. As a business, I would say the, well, the current challenge is always looking for new clients, but the, the cha current challenge as applies to reef keeping itself is always moving forward in a reef, keeping an eye on stability. Stability is so important and any move you make, even if it's towards what seems like a good goal, if it too quickly unbalances stability, can have bad results. Hello there, Jeff from Cleveland, Ohio here, here to answer a couple different questions. First one being, what is your current challenge in reef keeping? Well, this system back here behind me is my new 220. And right now I would say current challenge is keeping those uh, nutrient levels above zero, zero. Nitrate's been registering zero for about three months now. And my phosphate's up to about 0 0.01. Now I know it is not the worst issue in the world to have. There could definitely be way worse things out there. So the reason I'm saying this would be a problem is we put in the first couple different coral frags a week or so ago and really wanna make sure that those corals don't starve on out. My current challenge, I think, is still water. <laughs> but it's, it's, been, it's been being upstairs, it's location. I had a very large tank, 300 gallons, and we had to move into a house to take care of my in-laws, and the only place for the tank was upstairs. A 300 gallon tank, you know, that weighs about as much as a car, so it's not something I could really feel comfortable with upstairs. So it's challenging to have, to go from a tank that I can, could have put virtually anything in it I wanted to one where I really have to think about it. It's still a large tank by a lot of people's standards, but for me it, it is a challenge. 
Uh, my current challenge in reefkeeping is deciding what to do with these tanks behind me. Do I want to do long-term projects that are going to take a year or two and have to have these tanks covered up during the day because I need to control the light for them? Or would I rather make each tank its own interesting biotope and make some cool displays that would really excite me? Uh, so that's a, that's a tough one to decide what to do. Both of them have their ups and downs. I'm quite interested to see what I end up deciding. Our biggest current challenge has nothing to do with fish and everything to do with people. We need people that are committed and interested in raising fish. So if you've got some broodstock in your garage and you're thinking, do I want to try to raise those babies? The answer is yes. If you're thinking, hmm, I might want to go back to college and do a master's or a PhD in aquaculture, should I do that? The answer is yes. If you're thinking, hey, can I start a business that makes sense in marine ornamental aquaculture? The answer is yes. We need more businesses, more biologists, more grad students, more folks in their garage raising fish because there are a lot of fish species to work on and we need everyone who's interested in being involved, getting involved. Biggest current challenge, uh, not probably one thing in particular, time maybe. Uh, 2020 gave me more time to be at home and to spend on this, which was nice, but time is always a factor. Uh, other than that, it's, 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 it's a reef tank. You know, I, I describe reefing to people like, like a roller coaster. It's got its highs and lows, and uh, you, you just ride out those highs for as long as you possibly can, and you, you just know that after that high, there's going to be some, some downturn low, and you just hope that those lows can be as least impactful and as minimal and get back to those highs as possible. The biggest future challenge that I see for reef keeping is seeing the hobby continue with the bans in Hawaii and the regulations and all of the things that are against the reef keeping community and hobby. I think it's more important than ever that we share with, with everyone how important the hobby is to us and all of the positives that come of it and that it can't, that reef keeping can be sustainable. Um, so I would just say that's the biggest challenge and we overcome it with education and by sharing. To be quite honest, environmental problems as they pertain to attaining animals and whatnot. I mean, that's, it's the 800 pound gorilla in the room. Um, in the future, I just concerned about what we can and cannot keep in aquariums the you know less biodiversity places like hawaii the indo-pacific shutting down this and that so um, that is a future challenge of reef keeping so i'm feeling the pressure to go automated um, especially now so we're about to go on a vacation in december we're going on a wedding and we're going to be gone a week and this is the first time we've ever left the tank and so I'm trying to figure out how to make it as easy as possible for my friend who's going to watch the tank. Um, and I don't know if that means going the Apex or Hydros route or just, I just don't even know. But right now it's giving me like some fear, anxiety, you guys. Like wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like running down chair, like downstairs to check my sump because I'm like freaking out over it. And so that's like a really like near future challenge that I'm trying to overcome is how can I make this as easy as possible for whoever is going to watch my tank to watch while I'm gone. Got any ideas, help me out. I would say stakeholders are gonna have decisions to make as, as far as where production is going to continue. And then we're gonna see uh, changes in um, natural resource management, similar to perhaps what we've seen in Hawaii over the, just the past several months in the past few years. I think a huge future challenge in reef keeping is going to be involving ethics and animal availability. I think it's going to be uh, tougher to get animals from the wild, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. Uh, I think we've gotten spoiled with uh, inexpensive wild caught animals. And I think as uh, climate change continues and while uh, and, and people who are 
anti-trade uh, are looking and scrutinizing the hobby that uh, are getting together to be able to get the animals we want might uh, get more difficult. Uh, right now the hobby and the industry really has no unified positions and uh, no one to speak for it. There's no one single body that uh, we can turn to for best practices or for um, defense against uh, people who are attacking us on specious grounds. Um, so I think I think those are the challenges. We're, we're going to need to get that all together because uh, I don't see a way to stop any of those trains. We just need to be prepared for them. It's not insurmountable. It's not horrible. It's just something that's going to come up. I think the future challenge is, is as more uh, collecting sites start to close, uh, the price is going to get phenomenal. They're going to they're going to be out of reach, and it's going to happen again, just like it did in. Uh, when uh, Indonesia was closed and I'm pretty, you know, the internet is our biggest enemy because they saw what, you know, hobbyists were doing on our side and now that the wholesalers are, you know, Indo opened back up and the wholesalers are, uh, now they raised their prices up along with the shipping and everything because they seen what, what, what we did. So I think we, we just put, you know, stuck our own foot in our mouths by changing or having these outrageous prices for corals. And, 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 you know, it's pretty much taking the fun out of the hobby. What's our biggest future challenge? Let's say we get all these folks involved. We've got everybody focusing on making sure they've got marine ornamental fish in their tanks. What's so hard? I'll tell you what's hard. What's hard is that we live in a changing environment. And so the changing ocean and the changing political environment really can put the world of the marine aquarium hobby on its ear in an instant. So we all need to be prepared to be flexible, to be diligent, and to be committed to the marine aquarium hobby. Let's face it, we're doing cool stuff and we need to keep doing it regardless of what happens with the changing future. The future challenges for the reef keeping hobby as I see it, really relate to the regulations that the hobby is facing. Right now, we see continued regulation in Indonesia, Hawaii, that make the price of our hobby go up and up, and the availability of what we have go down and down. That's going to be a huge challenge for future reef keepers. For me, I believe that the future of the hobby is in farming. That we as hobbyists will need to make sure that our, our tanks are little arcs where we can frag and propagate and, and within the hobby more and more we will, we will need to be able to do that and to share with one another and larger organizations, and sometimes I say larger organizations, but sometimes individuals accomplish it too. We'll learn how to breed fish that up to this point have been difficult to breed. Well, how you overcome challenges through reef keeping is through uh, perseverance and having an open mind. Um, your problems you're gonna have, which you're gonna have, you're gonna need to work through yourself and figure out what you think is the right thing to do. And to figure out what the right thing to do is, you're gonna need to talk to other people and other people are gonna tell you crazy things. So you need to have your mind open to be able to decide if those crazy things are good or not. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. You know, as Tim Mitchin says, you know, a, uh, um, an open mind is great, but if you keep it open too much, uh, your brain will fall out. So you, you need to be reasonable and vet what people are saying, but you also need to have an open mind. My advice to this, learn, learn more, and keep listening. There's a wealth of knowledge out there. YouTube channels, uh, you've got Ryan and Randy from BRS, Fan from Tidal Gardens, Mark from Me Loves Reef, uh, countless others out there. Attending events such as this, MACNA, great event for sure. To be able to learn from others that have gone through and really taken their knowledge of years, decades of different knowledge. And everybody's kind of got a slightly different philosophy on how they do things, their opinions on things. What I like to do is take a listen to everybody, listen, hear them out, hear why they think the way that they do, and then form your own opinion. 
put your own experiences, put your own advice on into that and form what your opinion is to what you think is gonna work best. The number one strategy that I have used consistently over the years to overcome challenges in reef keeping is to learn. Just constantly learn, learn more and never assume that I have arrived at a, a place of maximum learning. Do you have any advice to people in, in the hobby or just reef keeping in general? It would be perseverance, you know? Know you're gonna have those lows and you know, there's lots of, uh, lots of resources out there to help you through those in terms of um, educational understanding. Uh, your experience is of course invaluable, uh, but, but just perseverance and, and uh, you know, know that you can get things back to how they work. Don't be afraid to ask questions, but also don't, like you need to research yourself as well. Because like I said, you're gonna go on these forums and you're gonna ask them like a question and you're gonna get 25 different answers for that question. And so you need to research yourself. So one, you know where these people are coming from with their advice and two, you're able to make an educated guess yourself. Um, Cause you, you gotta know um, why you wanna follow the route that you're following. And so also once you decide what you wanna do or you get an answer to your question, stick to it. Um, because that's gonna open up a whole different can of worms when you're jumping from like, if you're asking a question from advice to advice to advice to advice, it's crazy. So research, but also ask. The answer for the past 12 years has been the same as I think it'll be for the next 12, 20, or 200. And that is persistence. By being committed to the hobby, by being committed to the fish and committed to the ocean, I think we can all be part of something pretty big and pretty extraordinary. And that's really encompassed by the marine ornamental aquarium industry. Uh, the big thing I tell my students is, you know, I want you to fail. And that's from day one, uh, that's what I tell myself. You know, the goal is, is to fail and then quickly learn from that. It's not just to fail and fail and forget about it. I think that's the hard part as well, is that when you fail, it can be pretty frustrating, no matter what it is. But if you reflect on it, kind of think about, you know, why did I fail this time? What could I have done a little differently? And how can I change my outcome the next time? I think you're going to be more successful in the end. The advice that I have on how to overcome challenges in reef keeping, the, the first one I think is, is to be patient with your creation. When you first decide you want to have a tank, don't rush into it, plan it. It might be boring to bring out an Excel spreadsheet and start putting your your things on it, but I'm telling you, in the end when you plan it all out and you understand what kind of tank you want going in, it makes it a lot better. And so be patient with that process. Also, I think relying on the community. There are forums, Facebook pages, blogs, all over the place that you can watch and learn from and be inspired by. Um, I also do planted tanks and paludarium and things like that and I, c I can't tell you how many times I will see a video that inspires me to want to do a new tank or to tweak something in my existing tank. The people in the hobby I have found are it, its greatest asset. Top three lessons. If you know me, you know I'm gonna preach this. The number one thing I always tell people, keep it simple. There's no need to overcomplicate things. It is very nice having all the extra gadgets and whatnot, but you don't need it to be successful in this hobby. Second thing is one that I've already touched base on. Keep your hands out of the water. Stop it. I'm guilty of it. I know, I can't help myself. Try. Try to keep your hands out of the water. And lastly, there is more than one way of being successful in this hobby. Be respectful of one another and help each other. Number one, uh, being patient. Being patient with an aquarium. I've been doing this for a long time and just, you cannot create something really cool and interesting 
just overnight. So the patience, that's one. Number two would be observance. The whole reason why we would keep a reef aquarium is to observe it. But observing it for future pitfalls, you know, acro eating flatworms, aptasia, monopore eating nudibranchs, uh, mahano anemones, all those kind of things. A, a really closely observing things and the even um, corals fighting each other, what a coral should look like, what that coral looks like when it's happy, what what does it look like when it's upset trying to figure out you know what a coral looks like when they're fighting each other and the damage that they take keen observation of the aquarium probably even water quality you know you you can tell what things look like when a parameter might be off so observation buy all the fish go bigger with your tanks because it's still not going to be big enough um don't chase numbers that's like a legit one like I've seen too many hobbyists um, completely crash their tanks because they're trying to fit into this little spectrum of numbers and that's great like you need to be somewhere but you're gonna drive yourself crazy chasing numbers and so if it ain't broke you guys don't fix it um, it's, it's not rocket science um, don't chase numbers um, the first of the three lessons I've learned has been to work smart not hard. Uh, working hard, especially over time, if you're going to be in this for the long haul, working hard gets old really quick, especially as you get older yourself. Uh, for instance, I realized that I don't want to lug salt around. So uh, what did I do? First, I set up uh, about 400 gallons worth of uh, salt holding underneath my house, salt water holding. So I'd mix up all that salt and then I'd have salt for as long as that lasted. Uh, and then I realized that uh, I'm lucky enough that somebody near me will deliver me natural salt water that's been filtered 10 times. So I put a 500 gallon reservoir outside my house and every few months or so, um, Bob drives up with his truck of salt water and fills it up. So I don't lug salt anymore. And to move that water around, it's all pumped. So I just flip switches. Uh, it's, it, it's that kind of thing makes the hobby much more pleasurable. The second thing is uh, don't automate things you don't understand. If you haven't worked with it with yourself, you know, without automation, don't automate it. You need a working understanding of what's going on in your tank before you automate it. If you automate your calcium reactor and you don't understand pH and how um, calcium and alkalinity work, you're gonna have a bad time. So, you know, take some time and do it by hand first, then automate it. You'll have a much better experience in the long term. And the third most important lesson I've learned in reef keeping is don't make decisions when you're tired or stressed. If you get home from a long trip and something's goofy in your tank, do the minimum you can to get it through till the next day when you get some rest. You will make terrible, terrible decisions when you're tired and that can cause you money and uh, cause you to lose money and uh, cause your animal's life. So uh, keep your wits about you when you're making decisions, especially in emergencies. So when I think about three you know, lessons I've learned from reef keeping from over, you know, I don't know, I guess a couple decades now. Uh, it's just observations are, are critical for everything. Uh, looking closely, that's the fun of it. I mean, the, the whole point of having aquariums and, and having these different organisms is to observe them and, you know, pay close attention to them. So observation is one of the huge lessons I continually learn because I can always look a little more and then I usually see something cool. The folks that are hobbyists, you, aren't just regular ordinary folks. You're a group of people that are committed not only to doing the best job, but to making sure that you do a good job taking care of the fish and invertebrates in your care and the ocean that they represent. I really appreciate the marine aquarium hobby because it's folks that take their hobby into a much bigger picture of the world and it's that commitment to the ocean that I really value and that I don't think you see with folks who knit. They don't really care about my sheep. But I've never met anyone who doesn't have a nano tank that doesn't think about, hey, what does this mean for the coral reef that it represents? That's what I like about the marine aquarium hobbyists and that's what I like about Magna. I really appreciate being able to talk to you guys today and I hope you're having a kick-ass day. Take care.